Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. I'm going to play this video and talk about things that are going on to better explain what's going on and talk about things that I think that are being done right and or done wrong. Uh, this video comes from Nashville Police. Uh, there is no spokesperson for this video or any explanations uh, from the Nashville Police about what's going on uh, in this video. They don't follow the typical critical incident briefing type of format. For whatever reason, they just didn't do it on this. I suspect that they probably put this out quickly to uh, inform the public of what has happened. Because it's a lot quicker just to put the raw footage out versus doing an actual presentation because you have you know a spokesperson who may have to do multiple takes sometimes you get to words mumbled and jumbled um, so you know there's a it's like producing a movie of sorts and so that takes time so it could be that instead of taking the time to do the actual format they decided to very quickly put this out to stop any rumors from spreading or uh, to shut up all the the naysayers and, and people who make up lies about the police and, you know, prevent people from saying, oh, they shot an unarmed black man, blah, 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 when obviously you can see in this video, it's, 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 it's an armed black man, not an unarmed black man. Um, it's unfortunate that agencies have to do that, but sometimes that that's what agencies end up having to do. Uh, and it could also be that because this was a little bit after uh, the uh, Nashville private elementary school killings that um, you know they could have been just super busy with stuff and they just didn't have time to do an actual briefing video and just wanted to put this raw body cam footage out for whatever reason I don't know for sure what it is but uh, I do have a news release from Nashville.gov to be able to explain a little bit about what's going on here um April 4, 2023, a gunman is in custody this evening after he opened fire on three Madison Precinct detectives just before 1 p.m. on Diggerson Pike. They returned fire. Detectives attempted to conduct a traffic stop on a white Chevy Tahoe that was being investigated for illegal narcotics activity when the vehicle fled. The Tahoe was disabled and wrecked in the 3500 block of Diggerson Pike. As detectives started to approach the Tahoe, the driver, Denman Buchanan, 45, began shooting at them from the driver's seat. Buchanan unloaded an entire magazine from his pistol as he fired at the detectives. Three Madison Precinct detectives returned fire. No one was injured in the exchange. Buchanan, who was wanted on 13 outstanding warrants, was taken into custody. Three aggravated assault warrants, in addition to drug drug related charges are anticipated um so this dude being investigated for narcotics activity and him doing all this shit i would not be surprised to find out that this guy is a career criminal someone who's been in and out of the system multiple times um also would not be surprised to find out he if he is at this incident was currently out on bond was on probation or parole um, or if the last crime that he committed and was convicted of, had he been final sentence to the full term, he wouldn't have been here. He would have been in prison where he belonged and this never would have happened. Uh, that seems to be the norm, um, with cases like this. When people get into incidents like this with the police, the majority of the time, it's people who have been career criminals They've, they've lived a, a, a life of crime. They've been in and out of the system multiple times, given a lot of leniency each time. They were either, at the time of that incident, were on bond, probation, or parole, or had they you know been made to, to serve a full sentence, their asses never would have been out to, to do what they did. So uh, that's a recurring thing. Uh, in this country, unfortunately, uh, we have a, a broken legal system. I, I don't call it a justice system anymore because there is no justice that goes on at all. Um, it is a broken legal system, and this is happening far too much, far too often. This is happening. All right, 
getting off that and let's get into the video. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Oh. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Get out of the car right now! Get out of the ground! Do not move! Get out of the car! 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 Get the car! Clear! Clear! Take him into custody. Okay. So let's go back to the beginning of this. Uh, so it talked about they were trying to make a stop on this guy. And when they come to a stop, Get out of the car! we can see that his vehicle is in a pole. Uh, so don't know for sure what's been going on here. Also see what appears to be some, some damage to the rear of this vehicle. So I don't know if they performed a pit maneuver on this guy and... This is how it ended up, or they were chasing him, he lost control, hit the pole, he tried to conduct a U-turn, and uh, wasn't able to navigate it very well, and, and hit into this. I don't know how he ended up hitting this pole, uh, but he hit it, and he came to a, a full stop. As soon as they get out uh, to initiate this high-risk stop on this guy, he opens his door and opens fire. Get out of the car! Oh. So it is a very high volume of fire um, at contact. We can see. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Oh. That this officer, he is down a lot during this fight. We hear a bunch of gunfire going on while he's in kind of a cover position here. He fires some rounds, but I don't think he fires a whole lot of rounds. I think that what has happened is he's experienced some type of malfunction. The slide of the weapon was slightly back, so that could have been a stovepipe issue, could have been a double feed. I don't really know for sure. I just don't think that with him having a, a, an extended magazine floor plate on his mag, um, that uh, the amount of time that he was down and then the minimal amount of time that he came up and fired, I just don't think he went through an entire magazine on that pistol. So I think he most likely had a malfunction of some sort. He clears that malfunction and does get the gun back in the fight. But unfortunately, the malfunction occurred at the beginning of this gunfight. And that sucks. Um, that's a bad time to have a malfunction is in the middle of a gunfight. And this is why it is so important to train and practice for malfunctions. Because... You never know if they're going to occur, and you need to be proficient at clearing them so that when they occur, it's just an instinctual thing. Like, you just automatically react to it versus it happens, and then you stand there looking at the gun like, Uh, shit, what happened? Uh, oh yeah, do this. That does not what it needs to be like. It needs to be bang, 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 click tap rack bang get the gun back in the fight so very very high volume of fire we also and pause this right well, I can't pause it right in time, but we see a bunch of holes in the back of their uh, windshield here, or their rear windshield. 
I don't know if that came from the good guys. I don't know if this guy had reached up over the top of the trunk and fired some rounds through his windshield to, to towards that guy I, or the dude's incoming grounds was hit in the front of their car, um, hit their front windshield and came through and hit their back windshield. I, I don't know. We don't get to see any type of uh, reconstruction of the scene and, and get an idea of, you know, whose rounds did what or whatever. When he moves around, we can see a magazine for a rifle that's on his chest. So pay attention to the bottom here. Boom. That's a rifle mag. That's going to be a Magpul P mag. Um, that most likely means that there is a rifle in this vehicle. Why isn't this rifle out and being put into play? The passenger of this vehicle um, has a pistol out. The uh, other officer in the other car, he has a pistol. This officer right here has a pistol. Now, they attempted to initiate the stop. I can understand, you know, why the driver may not have had his rifle out because he's operating the vehicle. But the passenger of that vehicle can most definitely be operating that rifle and should be operating a rifle when they are engaged in an activity that they're engaged in. They've been specifically looking for this dude, investigating this dude, and going to be making a high-risk stop on this dude. For sure, rifles, long guns, needed to be out and put in play for this. Had the uh, passenger of that vehicle... Let's see if I can back this up some and get a freeze frame of what's going on. Had the passenger had a um, had the rifle out and ready, then when this dude popped his door open and began shooting, and you can even see his little head right there too. It looks like um, the passenger would have been able to lay down rifle fire into this vehicle right here. The rifle fire would have been devastating to the bad guy. The rifle is more accurate because it has a longer barrel and there's more points of contact on it. And its terminal ballistics are way better than a pistol. So had the passenger had a rifle, he could have got that rifle out, put sights right in that open door right there onto that person and just start pressing trigger. And you know for sure they're definitely going to have 30 rounds ready to go through right there um, even if uh, after the first initial contact was made and he goes to put his rifle sights on this dude and this dude's kind of ducked back into the car but still pointing his gun out and shooting and he can't really see his um, uh, his center mass he can't see his torso but the dude's still shooting at him aiming the gun out all that officer would have to do is move his sight a little bit to the side and put it somewhere right right in here on this door most likely and from the angles of this vehicle and from the angle of where that passenger officer would be uh, those angles should line up so that if he started firing into this spot right here the rounds would go through the door go through the rear seat of the driver's seat and into that person right there um, that would be um, a good utilization of, of rifle fire to be able to punch through the door of that vehicle and it keep its trajectory and still punch through the rear seat and go into that person and have enough energy to cause rapid incapacitation can pistol rounds go through a door? Absolutely. Pistol rounds will very easily go through a door. But they may not keep going at a straight trajectory as you would like them to and then go through the seat and still have enough kinetic energy to do anything to the person to cause rapid incapacitation. 
So although Pistol could most definitely make it through that door, um, it would be better if you could utilize rifle cartridge and punch rifle rounds through that door, through the rear of that seat, and into the person. Or firing a little bit above and firing through this glass into that rear seat and hitting the person in the driver's seat. It just would have been a better outcome, I think, had a rifle been put into play. I don't think this dude would have been able to, to have emptied an entire magazine at these officers. And uh, he would have been most likely incapacitated as a result of laying down heavy fire with a rifle. <clears throat> That's one of my chief complaints when it comes to videos like this. Officers neglecting to get rifles out. I think that there is a, a bit of a um, training problem uh, within law enforcement when it comes to rifle training. I don't think that there's good enough rifle training being done to instill the fighting mindset into people that, hey, a rifle is what you want in a gunfight. You can see this all across the country where officers are just neglecting to get rifles out. They're going to high-risk calls. They're going to shots-fired calls. They're going to calls involving people utilizing deadly physical weapons and yet they still get on scene and get out with a pistol only it's asinine it makes no sense to me um, but when you see people who have a higher degree of training higher level of training they will get rifles out so like you'll see a patrol officer who is also on a SWAT team boom they go to their rifle they get that rifle out why because they've had more training They've had more realistic fighting training. Not to say that patrol officers don't get realistic training. They, they do, especially with handguns. But I just don't think that the training is good enough at the patrol level to instill that mindset, that good fighting mindset, that you know a rifle is what's needed for a gunfight. Um, and I don't think that realistic training is being done when it comes to patrol rifle. So when you think about a rifle training class, uh, everyone starts on the line with the rifle. That doesn't make sense to me. For a pistol, yeah, it does, because you're always going to have your pistol on your side. So when you're standing on the line, hands are empty, and the fight command starts, boom, you get to start right then and there with the gun on your side, just like you would anywhere else. You're not always going to be carrying a rifle, so starting the drills out with a rifle in your hand does not make a whole lot of sense to me because you're just not going to be walking around with a rifle all the time. What would make more sense is doing um, a more realistic uh, scenario approach is the rifle is in the place where it's normally going to be at in the car and the student has to go retrieve the rifle from where it's going to be at danger it up and then get on the line and start shooting. Yeah, you can, you can do some of your basic stuff from the line, get that down, and then progress to going through the steps of retrieving that rifle and getting it put into play. Um, I think that could help get officers in the mindset of getting their rifles out more often. Because when you think about it, they're not training to get their rifles out of the car. They're just starting on the shooting line with the rifle already in their hand like it's a fucking Call of Duty game. Like you're just starting there with the rifle and then boom, it's start time. That's not realistic. That doesn't happen. Um, some other reasons why I think um, we see some officers neglecting to get rifles out is because the administration is a bad administration and they put a bunch of red tape in place to hinder officers. Uh, so there's some agencies out there that have policies in place that say that an officer has to write a report, uh, notify a supervisor anytime they get their rifle or their shotgun out. I think that's kind of stupid. Uh, those things exist, I believe, because you know a mayor or uh, you know a city councilman or someone has gotten a, a call or a message from someone saying, oh my god, I was out and I saw this officer pull his rifle out. I saw him pull his shotgun out. It was so scary. Why did he need a shotgun out? You don't need a shotgun. Blah, 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 blah. And probably sent a message to the chief 
and was like, hey man, why is this guy getting a shotgun out and scaring people? Blah, 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 blah. And the chief, who was appointed, not elected, um, has said, oh, you know, I want to keep my place at the table. I don't want to lose my, my chief position and have to go back to the road. Puts out bullshit policies and says, all right, if you guys are going to get your shotguns out, uh, you're going to have to uh, uh, justify why you're getting your shotguns out. You're going to have to you know, notify a supervisor and you have to write a report about why you got your shotgun out or your rifle, whatever. Uh, you know, or it could be, you know, people calling and complaining to the chief and, uh, or, you know, and the chief, you know, just telling the supervisors, Hey, get a, get a control on these guys whipping their rifles out. It's scaring the shit out of the people. We don't want to look bad. Um, stupid, completely stupid. I think that, uh, those, those people should be able to learn how to tell, other people to shut up and stay in their lane um but unfortunately that happens and in some places officers are being told that they have to write reports on why they pull their taser out not even deploy it not even shoot it but anytime they take their taser out of their holster they have to write a report on why they did that there are some places that are forcing officers to have to write reports on why they pull their handguns out of their holster that's wrong that is setting a bad precedence that is uh, that is creating a uh, a uh, like a training scar of sorts uh when they are not wanting to get something out because they know they're going to have to write a stupid report on it then they're not going to be getting it out when they should be getting it out and something's going to happen where they should have had it out but they didn't get it out because they didn't want to write a report and i think that's happening right now in some places with rifles they just don't want to you know, write a report or on getting a rifle out, and they've do, done it so many times that it's just instinctual at that point. They don't even think about grabbing the rifle because they've gone so many times of avoiding that rifle that they don't ever think to go get it. Anyway, uh, enough on talking about rifles. Um, but in summation, if he had a rifle, I think he would have rocked this dude's world. I think he would have knocked his dick in the dirt. So we pause this down to see if we can see that guy leaning out and shooting. So as soon as he opens it, he fires. You can kind of see him in here. That looks like... Mm, I can't tell. I can't tell very well. It looks like there's his feet. Kind of like he's swinging out some. You make out the bend and the L shape of the legs right there. And that looks like his arm and his hand and the gun coming out. And he's just shooting right there. But then we won't... We won't be able to see much because this officer, he takes cover very quickly. Alright. Go back into normal speed. All right. Oh, perfect. Perfect freeze frame. <laughs> Couldn't do this again if I tried. So uh, there are rounds in this magazine. So I'm right. He did not fire a bunch of rounds. And you can even see what looks like um, from the back of the magazine where the holes are to show you how many rounds are in. It looks like you can see rounds being shown down to here. Um, so I do think this guy experienced a malfunction of some sort. Um, now, um, when he moves, he moves very quickly and the guy up front, we don't see him anymore. So I think that as soon as this guy turned and started running, that dude up there got up and ran with him and he's now to his back left or even to his full back area some. Um, it looked like to me, of course, this officer experienced a malfunction. This officer over here from this vehicle when this guy is approaching, and let's see if I can 
go back to slow down speed here. Now this guy is performing a reload right now. So we got two guns down in this fight. This guy who has the malfunction and this dude who has uh, apparently emptied his magazine. And also it looks like his windshield's shut up too. Yeah, his windshield's got holes in it as well. Hmm. So I'd imagine he came to the back of his vehicle, was probably trying to aim over top of the hood or the, uh, the roof and was putting rounds in his back windshield. All right, so let's go back to the front here. That, ooh, so let me try and pause it just right. That guy's gun, and I can't pause it just right to get it stuck on there. His gun is right there, man. Just right there. Let me try it one more time. If I can't pause it this time, then I just won't do it again. Ah, it's going to be right there. Ah, so it looks like possibly his gun is out of battery as well. Yeah, it is, because you can see the, the, the barrel very clearly. Ah, it's right there. And I know I said I wouldn't do it again, but it's, it's almost like playing one of, those, one of those stupid arcade games, like the claw game or whatever, where you're like, you just keep trying because you know you're going to get it. But anyway, uh, his gun is also out of battery. It sounds like you hear him say something about magazine. So let me go back to normal speed here. Just listen to him trying to talk in the background. So it sounds like he says, give me a mag, give me a mag, give me a mag. Or he could be saying something else. Yeah. So... At this moment in time, it appears to me all three guns are out of the fight. <laughs> that sucks. That sucks. That really does. Uh, so his guns malfunctioned. This guy has conceivably fired to empty or because there's a lull in the fight, he's doing a magazine change. The other guy up front, it looked like his slide was back and you could see the barrel. Um protruding out, or not protruding out, but just uh, uncovered. Um, so yeah, that's that's crappy. Like, when you, when your your team has no ability to lay down fire, you're sitting ducks. <laughs> and they're lucky that that dude had emptied his magazine and was no longer shooting at them. And they're lucky he didn't have a buddy in there with him who's going to pop out and start popping rounds at them. Because they had been totally screwed at that point. Um, and that's also going back to the rifle talk that's why I think it would have been really great had that passenger had a rifle because he would have had more rounds to to deploy than what these officers with their pistols would have had in their pistols um, the guy with the rifle could have laid down some, some good fire and then when these officers with pistols ran dry, they could have performed a reload and then got their guns back on target while the rifle guy was still firing rounds. So when it comes to uh, you know getting your gun back in the fight, uh, it, you, you want that to be done as quickly as possible. Um, so this guy was at the very front he is very close to the threat and his gun runs into a problem. Um, 
he could have fixed it right there behind that vehicle that they were behind and then got his gun back in the fight but he chose to do the Nike drill and beat feet back to this point of quote unquote cover back here when he did so he left his buddy up there for what seemed to be a short amount of time um, with an empty gun and you hear him talking about what sounds like I need a mag, need a mag, need a mag uh, so he he takes off running that dude's there that guy I think very quickly after he notices that dude leaving and you even see him kind of hit that guy on the shoulder too and so that could have been a signal to him like hey let's get the hell out of here um, and he responded by obviously getting the hell out of there uh, they may have believed that this guy back here was providing cover to them so that they could bound back to the to this position back here lo and behold this guy wasn't ready to provide cover because he's performing a damn reload uh, and again we don't know if he's performing a reload because he fired the slide lock or because he's doing a tactical reload where he knows he's fired some rounds but he wants to put a fresh mag in so there's a way to do bounding um, you communicate to your partner uh, that you are wanting cover and they respond by acknowledging that you know they've heard you and they are providing cover and then you move and then when you get to where you need to be you communicate out to that person that you're you're set where you're at um, and then that person communicates they want to move and you can respond and acknowledge yeah you're good to move and then that person moves <clears throat> so something like um, moving you can like you say moving and then the other person says move and then you move you get back to where you're at and you're saying set and that person's like, all right he's set and that person says moving and you say move and that person runs back to where they need to go so that's how it could be um, done uh, there's you know some other things that you know that could be uh, said you know you can say cover and that person can say covering and then you run back to where you need to be you can say set um, and then that person says cover and you say covering and then they run back and then they announce that you know they're in position or whatever um, and cover can also mean instead of you wanting to move it could also just say hey I want to do a magazine change whatever um, you just say uh, cover and uh, the other person says covering and then you know that you can do your magazine change right there and then once you get it done, you say set, and then the other person knows that you're back in the fight, and you can say cover, and they respond covering, and then you do your thing. So um, either one doesn't matter. You can even uh, train and practice to do both, whatever. But the idea is to communicate what's going on here. Um, so if this dude did have some rounds left in his gun, uh, he could have, you know, received that message of cover and then say covering and then keep that gun pointed at the threat while these dudes beat feet to the back of here. And then once they got to the back, they go from there. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Get out of the car right now! So you can't see very well past this door right here. I guess he is possibly getting out or has already got out. I think that he was in the midst of getting out. We just can't see it very well because of this door right here. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! You can see what looks like a hole through this uh, side uh, window right here. You see the back windshield all ate up. Get the car right now! Bunch of holes right there. <laughs> I don't. I really like to to know like the crime scene reconstruction here to see like whose bullets were going through right there. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! 
Get on the ground right now! Get on the ground! Get on the ground right now! You can see a bullet hole right there. Get on the ground! Like this car is all shot to shit. Do not move! There's uh, some steam coming out the front, so I'd imagine this dude has probably fired some rounds into the radiator. Move up! Move up! Move up! Watch the car! Watch the car! Watch the car! You can see on the front of his door, car. there's a mark. Looks Watch like a bullet car. hole. Right down there, of course, it went out of frame, but it's right down there. That looks like a mark right there for a bullet hole. Bullet hole right there. Oh, sorry, that wasn't a bullet hole. A uh, bullet hole or a mark right there. So, can't see very well where their rounds hit the vehicle, but you do see a, what does look like a couple rounds. That right there, that could be a bullet hole. Not really sure. Um,. But as we pause it right here, so from the passenger vehicle, going back to what I was talking about with the rifle, from the passenger vehicle here, or passenger side of this vehicle, he could have, like I said, very easily started putting rounds through this this portion of the door right here and just eyeballing it. It looks like the trajectory would have been able to um, put rounds through that rear rear seat into this guy's back can't uh i just can't say enough about um uh, getting rifles out i mean they 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 are a game changer they really are clear clear take him into custody this guy was not shot none of these officers luckily were not shot um but between these three officers Potentially, potentially two of them emptying their magazines at this guy. This guy was not hit. <laughs> that, uh, like, wow. <laughs> Out of that many rounds, this dude was still not hit. This guy is a lucky criminal. Um, but that's not completely uncommon. There are misses with handguns and gunfights it's just it's one of those inevitable things um, you're dealing with a weapon that has a very short barrel on it the littlest amount of movement just simply pulling the damn trigger can cause your shot placement to go off and at a shorter distance it may not seem like a whole lot but as you add increments of distance it is a whole lot. You're not even on target anymore at a certain point. Like this officer right here, who was all the way back here at this car, this is a pretty good distance between driver's seat and where he was at at the back of his car. Him pulling that trigger under stress, he, even though he may have had his sights on that guy, pulling the trigger may have caused his shot placement to go so far off, he never hit the guy at all. Probably... I wouldn't be surprised if some of his rounds never even hit the damn car. That happens with pistols. Because again, like I said, you're dealing with a weapon that has a very short barrel and the minimalist amount of movement. Just pulling the damn trigger throws your shot placement off. Which, again, going back to a rifle, like I'm beating a dead horse, with a rifle, you decrease a lot of that. You get a lot more accuracy out of a rifle. All right, uh, not much else to say about this video. If you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more Monday quarterback videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching.